People always thought that it was scary, but it never was scary to me. I, it never bothered me one bit. And I was absolutely terrified. I just, I was crying, kicking, screaming, going up there. To ride on the tram is a very unique experience. It's one of a kind. It's, it's better than any Disneyland ride. Another thing they say that if the cable breaks, the speed of the car accelerates so fast you don't have the time to jump off, so you're gonna die. If you jump off, it'll kill you. If you stay on, it's gonna kill you, so you just hope the cable never breaks. Nestled at the base of the Sierra Nevada mountain range lies a unique hydroelectric power generating system. Constructed during an era of growth and advancement in hydroelectric generation, this system was developed in response to the increasing electric demand in California in the early 20th century. Located on the eastern side of Yosemite National Park, on the Inyo National Forest, and hovering above the town of June Lake in Mono County, the system takes advantage of the Sierra's rainfall and snowmelt onto the sharp eastern-facing slopes, providing a continuous supply of water to generate power. This system, called the Rush Creek Hydro System, is a high-head design that consists of four basic components. These include a series of lakes and dams that harness water and carry it through penstocks to a powerhouse located at the base of the mountain range below. The Rush Creek system begins at an elevation of 9,400 feet with a single arch dam that captures water from Wall Lake. It then drops 400 feet in elevation to a second multiple arch dam at Gem Lake before descending another 500 feet to Agnew Dam below. The dramatic drop in elevation increases the pressure of the water's flow through the penstocks before entering the powerhouse, where it turns massive water wheel turbines, generating 48 million kilowatts of power annually. Originally, the Rush Creek hydroelectric system was developed by the Pacific Power Corporation between 1915 and 1925. In 1922, the Pacific Power Corporation dissolved into the Nevada California Electric Power Company, whose name and affiliations changed several times over the years. Ultimately, it was purchased by Southern California Edison in 1964. Today, Southern California Edison operates the Rush Creek Hydro Project under a license from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. The project is managed as an historic district eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Development of the system began in 1915. The system's remote location and elevation required the development of a supply chain and unique tram system to haul the thousands of tons of sand, concrete, and heavy equipment up the sharp vertical terrain. And Rush Creek was quite a feat uh, to build Rush Creek. Uh, uh, it was before my time, of course, but uh, they hold all that material. There was no highway. There was no 395 in, in those days. All that stuff was loaded out in Benton, California, uh, unloaded in Benton and hauled across those big old sand flats to Rush Creek. All the pipe, all the cement, all the, everything. Construction crews worked year-round on rough terrain in often inclement conditions to build this impressive system. By 1917, Pacific Power had completed the powerhouse, penstock lines, and the lower two dams. Two independent sections of inclined cable railways were installed one from the powerhouse to the base of Agnew Dam, and a second from Agnew Lake to Gem Lake above. The cable was just a little over a mile long on the Agnew Tram, and then the Gem Tram was a quarter of a mile. 
At the top of each tram line, an electric hoist spooled a cable connected to a tram car below, raising or lowering it up the track. The first section of tramway, known as the Agnew Tram, begins at the Rush Creek Powerhouse. Large quantities of sand, cement, and equipment were loaded onto the tram car to be delivered to the construction sites above. Today, Edison workers utilize the tram in the same manner as their Pacific Power counterparts a hundred years before. The original tram was wood? Wood, yeah. yeah. The original car was wood. The old car used to have just four wheels on it with two axles, but they were stable. They just moved up and down. They didn't turn or anything else, so it would go around a corner and pop off a lot. So that's the reason why we decided to make a new car. The new car has struts instead of an axle. It's got uh, eight wheels on it with struts that move up and down and shock absorbers to keep it on the track, keep the tires down on the track. The Agnew track climbs 1,290 feet in elevation over a distance of about 4,800 feet. Due to the precipitous rock slopes, the tram line was originally constructed as a wood trestle. However, the entire line was upgraded and backfilled with ballast in the 1950s. So today, the track lays on grade. The track consists of dual 25-pound gauge rails laid on wood ties on top of a bed of ballast. It consists of several components to keep the cable and tram car on the track. These include an overhead, shivs, rollers, and wood blocks. And the overhead that we just passed, when you start off with a big load, that cable goes way up in the air and it was tearing things up. So they put the overhead in and it holds it in place. A shiv is a wheel set at an angle to catch a cable when you go around a corner. It keeps the cable straight in the middle of the track to go around the corner so it doesn't have a side pull on the car. Shivs are real important because if you put a side pull on the car, it pulls the car off the track. And then you had to make sure that when you're coming down that all the shivs receive the cable. If it got on the wrong side of the shiv, well then you're going to come off the track. We put four by four blocks or four by six blocks, depending on where, where, where we needed them, to keep the cable mm -hmm. out of the dirt. And the rollers and the, and the blocks were there to, so it didn't destroy the cable after a year or so. The cable is, uh, it's the most powerful steel there is, so it'll wear out the shivs and the rollers and everything else before it wears out. The tram is pulled by a 25-pound, three-quarter-inch cable attached to a 75-horsepower hoist. The hoist is housed in a building that is located at the end of the Agnew tram line. It is run by a heavy equipment operator called a hoistman who communicates with the tram operator and workers riding on the tram. Now, this building here is the hoist house. Its function is to, is to protect the hoist from the elements. It's a cable hoist. It plays the cable out when you lower the car. Well, before we had radios, we used to use a, a bell signal system similar to a mine hoist. We used to have a, two number nine wires went all the way from the hoist house yes. all the way down to Russian power house. And when you'd start to get all, you know, the car all loaded up, ready to go, one guy would walk up to the signal line with a, we called it a wand, it was a piece of brass on a wood stick, and you'd hit the two wires, which makes your circuit, and it'd ring a bell, and, and a light would go on up in the hoist house. One bell, two bells, up to five bells. And that was the old system where, where we had a light and a bell hook up. We have a pointer system that's run by a screw driven by a chain over here that's attached to the drum. With that pointer system, we know where the car is on the track at all times. There's a pack station down below that uses this trail uh, next to all the dams here. They go into the backcountry a lot, and they make anywhere from one to five or six trips a day. And uh, they'll have a string of mules. The packer will have you know, at least five or six uh, mules on a string. We have a lower horse crossing and upper horse crossing down at uh, Angel's flight down here that the mules will cross. The policy of the company is always the mules have the right of way. So as soon as you come over to the top, and you see the trail and you see the mules sitting there, you always stop for them, let them go first. 
then you start going up is that usually the cable scares the mules because they think it's a snake. So when it starts moving, they, they, they'll see that thing moving and they think it's a snake and it spooks them until they get used to it. Angel's flight inclines to nearly 60 degrees grade. It's just pretty steep. The Angel's flight is just uh, about halfway up. You go over it and it creek and it, it's, it was pretty high in the air and just for some reason it just terrified me. I often wondered what I was going to do if the cable broke, but uh, uh, there was nothing that you could do. You just rode it out or you jumped one of the two. There, there, that's the choices you had. At the top of the line, the Y switchback and new hoist house were added to the system in 1953. And so we'll turn the switch and then pull up the roller. And the roller uh, grabs the cable. And then once you activate the switch and when you bring the car back down, it just takes it off down that spur. You unloaded everything at Agnew, and you put it on a on a barge, and you boated across Agnew, and uh, and unloaded it onto a car, and back up to Jim Lake. And you went to Jim Lake, you had to unload it twice. This is where the second tram begins. This section, called the Gem Tram, covers 1,600 feet of single track and rises about 560 feet up to a hoist house at Gem Dam's southern end. Some 100 meters below the top, a steel frame trestle connects with a wood dock, where a path leads to a bunkhouse below Gem Dam. We didn't have anything to do up there to, after uh, the evenings, play poker or uh, go fishing back at Clark Lakes or something like that. And that's when we were staying at uh, Gem Lake in the bunkhouse. And uh, there was a lot of characters. I guarantee you. <laughs> Everything went to uh, went to Jim Lake or Agnew went up the tramway, and uh, just everything you could think of from tours to heavy construction equipment went up the tram, and it was that way from the beginning. Not surprisingly, these trams have been continuously used throughout the past 100 years to maintain and repair the dams and their associated features. And those pieces that we passed back up there by the overhead, you saw those pieces of rock? That one came down in 2007, landed right on the track, right in the middle of the track. Just missed the cable, and we had one day to get it. It took us two days. We broke it up, drilled it, and broke it up. The tram is an integral piece of the Rush Creek hydroelectric system, allowing transportation of materials and labor necessary for construction and maintenance of the system. It's also a living history. The unique knowledge and skills necessary to operate the tram have been passed down through many generations. Operating an inclined tram is a dying art when faced with the modernization and automation of many hydroelectric systems today. Even with the upgrades that have occurred over its almost 100-year lifespan, the tram retains an historic feeling and provides a unique and historical experience to those lucky enough to ride the tram. It invokes a nostalgic feeling, as if they were back in time in the early 20th century, when big dreams and hard work built the infrastructure of this country. Thank you.